Hi, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. It is um, the 3rd of March and we've got a lot of stuff to go over that just arrived, as I do almost every month uh, here at skyfiaudio.com. So I'm gonna jump right in and get to it. It should be around 15 minutes or so. I'm gonna work around the shop and, and share a bunch of cool gear with you. This uh, intake rack, this is stuff uh, that we keep ready for photography. So it's generally one or two weeks away from hitting the website. I'm going to start from top to bottom. We've got a Pioneer F91 uh, digital FM tuner. I tested this one myself. It came out real clean. Um, and everything on it works, even the presets. A beautiful piece from Pioneer from the 90s. Um, a pair of Oppo Blu-ray players. These are super reliable. Um, they are both been sorted and, and ready to go to market for those of you that are want the last of the super clean ones. Um, NAD integrated amplifier. This is rather modern, although it looks uh, to be from the 90s. They kind of copied the aesthetic. Uh, decent integrated, about 50 watts or so. This is a pair of gorgeous uh, Bowers 802Ds. This is the first of the Diamond series, as you can see by the, by the tweeter. That is the well-regowned uh, Diamond tweeter. Uh, in first generation. They're still using a tweeter very similar to this and if we pop these grids off these have that Kevlar the traditional Kevlar uh, mid-range as well in a beautiful wood finish. Um, one owner set of speakers um, terrific sounding really uh, a, a nice uh, nice neutral uh, engaging sound. Uh, to the left of it I've got a preamp from PBN. This thing is beautifully made. Um, if you're curious about it look at our website next week we took some neat interior pictures of it so it's a, a two chassis preamp with a separate power supply as you can see uh, moving over here this is a beautiful restoration by our in-house engineer uh, ben he restored this pioneer sx 1250. this is 160 watts i believe uh, and look at the size of this chassis this would not fit on your average rack but uh, there's a huge following now in the industry for a big uh, receivers from this era you know the biggest ones the the era where they were fighting over how many watts they could stuff into one box uh, fairly intricate but these are, are going through a really neat resurgence right now so if you like this kind of look uh, try to get one before they go crazy in price and it might actually be too late uh, moving over here this is our long-term uh, test bench this is where we put things through their pace to make sure that they are working reliably and we've got here a freshly restored solid state amplifier this is a 2205 so an mc 2205 we did um, a beautiful led upgrade to it and uh, i think we probably replaced the glass on it because it looks brand new a beautiful piece we're running very low on stock on vintage mac amplifiers so we try to move this one up the queue and to the right of it it's a 31 a c31v this is the first of the remote controlled preamps from Macintosh. It actually does not have a, a physical volume control. It has buttons on it and this little LED display, which makes it fairly interesting. Um, but inside is an actual potentiometer with a motorized volume control. So it's a bit of a, of a odd duck, but um, it's nicely built. And uh, we've got a real nice clean sample here for you. All right, swing over this way, pair of Macintosh. MC611, uh, these are 600 watt mono blocks, uh, one per channel. Uh, this is a complete set, so we've got the boxes and manuals for, for these and they're working beautifully. And just to the right of it is um, Bowers 805. This is D3, I believe. Let's go take a look at the back. Um, I didn't really label it, but uh, 805 for sure. So maybe D3, D4s. Um, maybe we'll look at the grill. We'll know. So, okay. Using the continuum um, woofer. Um, back over this way, 804 D3s for sure. I know that. Um, super minty pair. We don't have the boxes for these, so we're just doing local pickup for now. But this is just one generation old uh, Barris and Wilkins. Uh, floor standing. So this is their smallest of the floor standing speakers. All right, swinging back this way. Lots of great stuff to share. Um, let me work on this bench here from left to right. Um, we pulled down this uh, Sakara uh, tuner from um, 1970s probably. 
and uh, we got it to tip top shape and uh, we've got a couple of these online but um, this will add to the mix it has a really interesting gunmetal finish to it you can't really see it on this light but it's a uh, it's a really cool finish all right moving down the line we've got a pair of macintosh home theater processors these are older ones mx119 is sitting here and next to it is an mx120 and believe it or not there's still a great market for these processors although the codec is is rather outdated people love them as preamps they perform really nice they've got a great audio circuitry so um, folks are using these um, for their switching, for the volume control, for they often have a phono section in them. So they're still really nice pieces. And of course, it's got that amazing Macintosh look that everybody wants. And they're fairly reasonably priced compared to a modern processor from Macintosh. Uh, moving to the right, I've got a Bryston ST. This looks like to be a three channel model. Um, this was just, we've just gone through this. It's a real clean example. Um, um, I can't remember the wattage exactly, but um, it is three channels, even though it looks like it would be a four channel unit. But you can tell by the three lights here in the front. Uh, here's a pair of Macintosh CD players. Actually, one's a transport, one's an MCT450, uh, which just got serviced, it got new belts and uh, a draw adjustment and it's working beautifully and then below it is a 301 that was also fully serviced i went through this it took me quite a bit but i've got it sorted out nicely it is the mcd 301 this does play super audio cds and uh, regular cds this got a new laser a pickup assembly old new belts which are quite a few of them and it's working beautifully um, one of the nice things about the mcd 301 is that it's got a variable output as well so you could use it as a preamp um, flipping this way, I've got an MC58. This is um, it's a multi-channel amplifier meant for distributed audio. So if you've got a bunch of speakers in the ceilings throughout the house, Perfax hooked up to uh, some Sono zone players. This is a great piece from Macintosh. Um, one, two, three, four. You can run four rooms out of this, eight channels in total. I missed something back here. This is a Pioneer Spec 1 preamp. We've had a bunch of these in the past to do super well. It's one of the coolest looking preamps from the 1970s called the Spec 1. There's a really nice matching amplifier that goes with this that you should be on the lookout for if you like this look. And that one is going to get a light service from us. It's not ready to rock and roll just yet. Kef LS, um, LS50s. Uh, we've had four or five pairs this year. These sell super nicely. This particular one is in very clean condition. This is a Stereofire Class A rated speaker, very, very highly reviewed. Uh, everyone should have a set at some point. Look at that cool UniQ driver. That's a, both a tweeter assembly and a woofer into one driver. All right, swinging this way. Let's see, I've got a uh, turntable here I'm building for a client. This is gonna be uh, a Thorns TD-124 with dual tone arms. Uh, here is the drive itself, fully restored. We did a automotive black lacquer finish on it. This is gonna get two tone arms, including an SME. Uh, this is a fully custom uh, build that we're doing for a client. So you'll see this uh, further down the road. This is a neat project we just took on. Our friends at Audio Classics up in Bimington um, sold us this unit, which is essentially a power controller. This is a Variac. And it's in kit form, which is really exciting. Uh, this would be used to bring up the voltage on an amplifier, particular tube amplifiers that you want to bring them up slowly or control the amount of current that gets to them and voltage. It's almost like a safety device for powering audio equipment. And um, these were manufactured back, I imagine the 70s and 80s, and it's in kit form, which is super cool. So we've got all the meters here for it and all the electronic parts. And... Uh, an assembly manual so I'm probably gonna do a video just on put this thing together because it's so cool and unique when you go to Mac Macintosh even today you see these on just about every test bench uh, in their facilities so there's got to be dozens of these in operation in, in several sizes this is the smaller of the two so cool project they had swinging this way um, I've got a MA252 this is a current generation Macintosh piece this has a defective um, headphone jack. So this is not a manufacturing defect. This is probably user error. Someone busted the headphone app, so we're fixing it for somebody. 
in the, the tech area i've got a pioneer rt 707 i believe uh, i'm working on this one myself I've got some new pinch rollers on the way i've already sorted the internal binding that happens throughout the entire mechanism so this is now freed up and working very common failure uh, i strained out one of the bent hubs on it and uh, clean, clean all the controls uh, it's making a good tape but i'm waiting for some rubber parts for it before it'll go to market let's see i've got nothing on my bench but ben's got an mc275 that he's uh, sorting out some noise uh, this is a good indication of what a modern mc275 two amplifier from macintosh 75 watts times two this is the bottom of it pretty cool stuff and then back this way we've had these before these SA equalizers are really really beautifully built um, they use individual coils for every attenuator and uh, we had a bad one in one of these so we found the donor piece which is sitting right there and we're gonna make one good one out of these two so that should be a fun project MC2120 waiting for uh, some service 2505 some Luxman's this looks to be a Pioneer amplifier N91 that's waiting for some bulbs. And then swinging back around this way. Let's see, here in the speaker bay, I want to mention we do have a pair of 802 D3s that just came in. Um, so just one tiny step smaller than these. These are the 800 D3s. So we have 802 D3s as well, fully crated up and ready to go, looking brand new. So uh, let us know if you're looking for a pair. That's the sister to the 802D that I showed you earlier. And on the speaker front, not much else new. We've been trying to cut back on how many speakers we've got here in the shop. It's been getting a little nutty. All right. Uh, and then one more thing I'm going to show you, the things that are waiting for... Uh, oh, let me show you this. So I've been working on this for a while. I've done a few videos on this system here. This is the, the sort of the best from the Pioneer Elite era. Um, I'll put a link below in case you're interested in learning more about this, but I did do a pretty good video on three or four of these pieces. And then I've been assembling the Sony equivalent. Um, we'd sold all our original Sony pieces from a while back and I was kind of missing them. So we've, assembly, we've assembled um, a pretty cool system. Not quite the best preamp. This is the TAE-77. I'm still in the hunt for an 80ES, which we've had before, but I've got a really good uh, super clean 707 CD player. This is my favorite CD player that Sony ever made. There's a video on this one as well that I'll put a link. And I've got a 75ES uh, DAT tape just below it. Super minty. Found this one on eBay. So excited. Box, remote, manual. Didn't look like it had ever, ever been powered on. And then we've got a working N77ES that just got serviced. So I thought it'd be neat to put together in a single rack the best of Pioneer and the best of Sony from uh, the same era. So these guys would have fought head to head on the consumer electronics market back in the 90s. And then um, our typical clip stuff, Fortes, Las Galas, which I absolutely love in the back. And uh, turntable wise, I finished this up. This is uh, a restoration project that I did. Um, I'll link to this as well if you're interested in knowing more about it. It's a, a basis audio ovation, and I put an SME uh, five, uh, an SME, yeah, I think it's a magnesium torn arm, the five, the full blown uh, magnesium version of that torn arm, which I love on um, this basis drive. Super cool. This sits on dampened uh, spring, like suspension springs. And um, I think that covers most of it. Uh, the Wilsons, I think we talked about last time. And um, I think that's all for now. I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like the videos. And our website is at skyfiaudio.com if you want to see all this equipment online, mostly listed by now. And I appreciate you watching.